Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> It's Ben and Jerry's. Okay, so I'm fairly pissed off because I went to get Ben and Jerry's, which is my human right. It's in the Constitution. <laughs> and they, they, their ice cream was all gone. They had no ice cream. Only some vegan stuff. It's midsummer. It's literally the hottest weather we've had all summer, and they have no ice cream. What is going on? Ah. Deja vu. I've just been in this place before. Daniel wanted some Ben and Jerry's. Wanted Ben and Jerry's. But as I've told you before, they had none. So now, I just gotta deal with some chocolate. Because my craving for Ben and Jerry's is not gonna go away. <laughs> I can't hear it. Well, <laughs> now I'm pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm pissed off. So while Daniel's trying to finish clearing his uh, his mouth, I'm going to let you guys know as to why we weren't, why we haven't uploaded a vlog in a while. Daniel found a full-time job. I was uh, in college and working a part-time job, semi-part-time. Semi-part-time? Semi-part-time. It's like even less hours than part-time. Oh, okay. <laughs> but now it's summer. And they have no Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, they, they still have no Ben and Jerry's. But yeah, now we can actually do a uh, a full vlog for you guys. It's been a while. Sick. Oh, actually, fun fact: we um we're playing a gig in Dublin on Friday, Friday the nineteenth, and we just finished an intro track. So just before we uh, go on stage, or just as soon as we go on stage, we'll have this uh, track playing that goes perfectly into our song uh, "Exit Enthusiast." It sounds really good. Me and Daniel, we worked on it a bit before we started shooting. I think it sounds pretty. It's gonna. Like normally when we're, when we're playing, we walk out on stage, kind of like make sure we're in tune and then we just start playing, which is kind of, um, it's not as effective. It's like people are like, oh, okay, are they after starting? Are they not after starting? But now when we have a track, people are like, oh, okay, yeah. this is going to lead into something and then it does and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know exactly how I'm going to edit yeah, that. Yeah, I have a few. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's only about a minute and a half. It transitions well from like just straight up nothing into a full... We're still working on the end part and how it's going to transition completely. Whether we're going to go straight into a full band as soon as the uh, intro stops or we're going to... It's just going to be me playing the guitar. We'll figure that out. I think it works better if we do it as a full band because it just hits a lot harder. But rather than like having this big build up of like a load of tracks and all of a sudden you're just going back into one guitar. Yeah, it's a good idea, but we'll have to work out timing and shit. Fun fact, we don't have another practice before the gig, so whatever happens at the gig is our first time trying it. And we're actually going to be recording it. We're paying a guy up there to record the audio through the uh, the mixing desk. And so we're going to we're we're try and set up a camera as well. And we f*** it to bits. Forgive us. <laughs> Forgive us. Forgive us. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, so if we're not that comfortable with it, we'll just do straight into just guitar because it'll it'll be easier to do. So what we're going to do now is sort of a new segment that we've sort of we've done before, but we've never like formally addressed it. It's going to be called Question of the Day. Question of the Day. And the question we're going to be going through uh, today or this evening, it's going to be how do you overcome nervousness and how. Like, what do you do with it? Because you know, like, sometimes there's people that don't know how to handle it. They just kind of, it's like, oh, I'm nervous. I'm just going to go with it, see what happens, you know? I'll, I'll never forget the time we, uh, it was, I wasn't playing with Richard at the time. It was my first ever time getting up on stage in front of people. It was like, I think it was uh, the school. I said I'd never forget, never forget but like. You know, I'll like, never forget, proceeds to forget. I'll never forget the feeling is what I meant. Like, it was, um, we were. At, in school and it was like the talent show walked out like but like five minutes before i got on stage i realized i had to go out in front of like more than 100 people and i never played in front of anyone apart from like my parents before and i was like oh my god i walked out and i let the nerves get the better of me which is what you just cannot do and people don't know how to uh stop them from getting the better of you my hand sweated so much that i couldn't like keep my hand on the neck <laughs> and my legs were shaking and I just hit every wrong note I could. People knew. They knew I was just really nervous. I felt so like terrible afterwards. It's even, it's even worse for the audience because they're like, they don't know what to do because they feel bad. To a certain extent, it's your own fault for getting up on stage when you know you, A, you're not fully ready and B, you don't know what to do with that, with that nervousness, you know? Hi, Pigeon. Ooh. So I think that's my tip number one of the day. No matter how nervous you feel, just don't let it get the better of you because if you sit there and you read like before you walk on if you sit there and you realize that like it's only you that it's only your head that's in your head that you're nervous that you um you had you then when you walk out and you realize okay i shouldn't be nervous because i can actually play what i'm about to play you'll be fine that's my tip tip number one of the day
Tip number two would be to practice the stuff you're gonna play until you can literally, let's say it's a, it's a guitar riff. You play it until you can literally have a conversation with somebody over it and you don't have to think about it. That is to me, you know how to play that riff fully. You can do it if somebody's having a full-on conversation with you. In the words of Mick Thompson from Slipknot, uh, if you wanna like, be a professional guitarist, forget about your friends, forget about everyone else, because you just gotta practice like 10 hours a day. Not literally 10 hours a day, but like that's what he said before. And it, it really is true. Like I remember when I first started playing guitar, not so much anymore, because obviously Richard Lewis, it doesn't take nearly as long to learn a song now. I used to have to sit in my room literally for five, six hours at a time playing one riff with a metronome over and over and over. It was the most monotonous, most boring thing in the world. But I knew that if I kept doing it, I would eventually get to where I am now, which is like worth it. Back when I was in primary school is when I started to play the guitar. It was when I literally finished school at half two every day. I didn't have much homework. So I spent the majority of time practicing like hours, hours, grinding, grinding, grinding. Cause it was, I had just picked up something. I was so motivated, wanted to do as much things as possible. People ask me, it's like, how do you, how do you get into an instrument if you only started a couple of years ago? Cause everybody that probably watches our videos is like above the age of say 17 to 18 roughly. So you don't really have as much time as you do when you're like 12 or 13. So how do you, how do you start, how do you practice that? St you have to literally find time for it. Nobody's gonna become a world-class guitar player for doing an hour a day. An hour a day already seems like a lot. Every single day, an hour. World-class guitarist is never gonna be, is never gonna become that, so like how big they are. That's, that's not a real sentence. Um, <laughs> you just put in the work, you have to find time for it. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be. And like almost any riff that I write, I can immediately be able to play it and have a conversation with somebody. Because I, I've been playing guitar 10 years, I've, like, I have the ability to be able to just have a riff and know it instantly, you know? But then there's a the whole thing with when you're playing on stage, obviously any riff that you think you know like super well, when you're on stage, the smallest thing, somebody like sneezes in the left corner of like the audience and you look at them and you miss a no, it's gonna happen. You can't be flawless on stage. That's where, that's where the work comes in, you know? So tip four or like whatever we're on now is no matter how boring it gets, you have to not give up. Because when you first start playing it, like, have you ever wanted to learn how to play, play the guitar? But the beginning just seems so slow and fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, where was I? All right, take two. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> so, tip number four of the day kind of ties in with what Richard was saying before. You can't give up. Like he was saying, an hour a day may even seem like a long time, but it's like it's like anything in life. Say driving. Yeah. I'm learning how to drive at the moment. It's hard. It's, it's, it's not easy, but like it's something I want to do, so I got to keep going with it. No matter how much, how frustrated I get, no matter how much I want to stop at some points, you gotta keep going with it. And it's the same with playing the guitar or any musical instrument. Like, I always say guitar because I play guitar. Like, you gotta practice because you're never gonna get good at something if you don't practice. And practicing is hard. Like I was saying earlier, metronomes. Your head will be so annoyed from that. Especially if you're using like an electronic metronome. They get so annoying. There's an unbelievable difference. If you take a riff and you try to learn it, and you just try to learn it at full speed, it's gonna take you so much longer than if you just slow it down, play along with a metronome for like, an hour and you'll be able to play the riff up to speed and then of course after that hour you got to practice it more and more like up to the point where Richard was saying where you can have a full conversation with someone while playing the riff it may look like I'm running in reverse <laughs> I'm not this video is in the right motion <laughs> Daniel, it says no illegal dumping. What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, what? Oh, oh, what? what? Daniel. Hey guys, so we're under a bridge right now. I'm terrified. Yeah, we're. I feel like we're a troll. Actually, wait. Let's try it again. All right, we're, so we're under a troll. We're, <laughs> we're under a troll. <laughs> so as we're under this bridge, I wanted to talk about how you can turn your nervousness that you're feeling before you're going on stage, before you're going to perform in front of anybody, even if it's just your parents. Because uh, there's people that do get nervous even when you're playing for your parents. Turning that nervousness and turning it into adrenaline. Every single musician or performer gets nervous before they perform. I've been performing in front of people for 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
10 years nearly. <laughs> <laughs> nice save. The nerves don't ever decrease. Well, I mean, that's not necessarily true. I was talking earlier about like my first time playing and how nervous I was. I certainly don't get as nervous as that anymore. Because it turns in, it's like a snowball effect. You know, if you're in front of people and you know you're nervous and you know you're messing up, you get more nervous and then it gets, it just like snowballs. Like nowadays, our re most recent gig, Metal to the Masses, it was also in Dublin. It was this competition. There was a lot riding on it. Like if we didn't, if we didn't do the best to the best of our ability, we weren't going to go through to the next round. So what we did was I rarely get nervous on stage. It's always before, like minutes before I go on stage, always go to the bathroom before you go on stage. <laughs> yeah, I'm not always, even lying. Always take a pre pre dump. Because if you feel like you're gonna or urinate even before you get on, the feeling's only gonna get worse. What, what I think is funny about that gig, I tend to kind of go a bit nuts when I'm on stage anyway. I jump around a lot, I move a lot. But that gig, I had a lot of nerves beforehand because it was a competition. It wasn't just going to perform for people. You were going to perform for people and getting judged on your performance, which is like mm -hmm. 10 times worse. People are judging their own heads, but these people were literally writing down everything we did wrong. It also everything we did right. I think it was so funny how that was the gig where I lost my mind the most. Talking about turning your nerves into adrenaline. Like there's videos from that gig and I went my most crazy and it was the most enjoyable gig I've ever had because now I know how to turn my nerves from nerves into adrenaline to use that on stage to push the show and push my stage presence. A way to make your nerves go down is to play with other people. If you perform on your own, there's no one to kind of fall back on. If you're with a band and you feel nervous and you look over to your left and you see your guitar player, this guy right here, having the f***ing time of his life, it actually, it gives you a little bit of a boost, you know? They you, even said that, sorry for interrupting yeah. you, in, um, it's okay. in the review that they did, they noticed that. I don't know if you remember this part, but they were like, don't quote me exactly, but uh, oh, Richard and Daniel, their energy was fantastic throughout the whole gig. It was almost like they were feeding off each other which is actually what happens. Like you said, you look over and you see someone next to you having the time of their life doing the same thing you're doing. You're gonna be like, oh yeah, yeah, this is amazing. The judges actually marked us down good for that because it's proven to, to work. Anytime I looked over at Daniel, he was just like, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'd do the same. I'd be just as, if not more excited. And then he would try to top me and it would just skyrocket. So we're now on the bridge that we were just under and we're gonna watch Daniel jump right now. Now you saw the camera vibrate. That wasn't me shaking it. That was literally the vibrations of the bridge. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, it is pretty dark right now, so we're gonna wrap up there for today. I really hope that those uh, tips that we gave you was uh, somewhat helpful. Sure. But if the tips weren't helpful and you wanna let us know why, feel free as well. We don't yeah, as much anything. feedback as possible would be appreciated. Means we can do better for the next videos, we can be more clear. At the end of the day, we're still fairly new to this type of thing. Yes, yeah, so 100%. If you have any criticism, let us know. We'll try to make it better. Only good criticism. But for <laughs> this week, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. You know. Be in the notification squad. <laughs> We've been those guys from that band. Thank you so much for watching.